Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Our weekly segment with Baylor Director of Athletics, Mac Rhodes, is brought to you by Edward Jones Investments Brokers, Tom Albers, Brad Wilson, Ben Erlinson, and Cam Heathcott. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Greg Smokes off the radar coming up in the next segment. David Elman, Julia Morales, and John McClain will join us in the 5 o'clock hour. Dave Arand is at the Houston Touchdown Club, in fact, tomorrow night. And so that's coming up as well. We're now joined by Baylor Director of Athletics, Mac Rhodes. Mac, good to have you. You had kind of uh, been leaning towards the uh, capacity numbers going up. I think you even mentioned for sure 75%. And now today, 100% capacity. How much did you lean on the health officials? How much did you lean on maybe even Dr. Mark Ackerman, if any? Yeah, I, I, we we certainly relied on our you know the university's health management team and, and Kenny Boyd serves on that and uh, certainly in co- consultation with with uh, with uh, our other medical professionals. But uh, obviously felt felt good about making that decision for uh, for outdoor activities. Um, you know, we'll continue to vet um, you know indoors. Um, you know the the one one fall sport that, that's coming up quickest, obviously, is volleyball. But um, we'll continue to to monitor that and, and see see where that trends. But uh, again, we feel good about we feel really good about um, where we're at and that we can we can do it in a responsible way and and safe way. And so um, you know we're excited about it. we're excited. We'll we'll uh, see you know how it how it. Uh, how it goes with with baseball and in their you know final home stand against Oklahoma and uh, hope hope we can we can get the capacity but uh, hope that the fans come on out and and enjoy you know the the three games and then you know looking forward to to, to football and, and and soccer and uh, certainly you know cross country in the in the fall Mac with the with going 100% and planning to go 100%, is it easier for you to make the plan at 100% now that you have a year under your belt of of not being 100% that you could, if at any time, you had to, to dial it back? You, you already kind of know what you're doing? Yeah, I, I think given, you know, our season ticket base and 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 the fact that, you you know, we, we felt really, really confident that it was no less than, than 75%, you, you're really talking about single game ticket sales. Etc. So, um, yeah, much Paul. To your point, much much easier. And and again, we we wouldn't have we wouldn't have announced, you know, officially 100% for outdoor events if if we didn't feel uh, really really strong about it. And uh, you know, it's it's mid May, and, and uh, we we certainly understand that uh, there's there's three and a half months left before before the first of September, but, uh, but again, just given everything that's, that's happening, you know, in our community, um, uh, in the, in the state of Texas, CDC guidelines, uh, our medical professionals, again, the, the health management team, we felt, uh, really, really good at the decision. We didn't, we didn't take lightly and, uh, we feel, we feel good about, about a hundred percent. I'm not sure if you heard the update, but Stanford, who has that, what do you call it, Paul? They have that money. They got all that money. The endowment. The endowment, which has got a massive endowment. There were thoughts that they were going to drop about a dozen sports, and apparently they've now reversed that and say they will not drop anything, which is a great reversal for Stanford when it comes to the student-athletes involved. You have been able to keep everything going along with what you have at Baylor. Are we starting to see maybe the grass growing again? And not that everyone's like completely out of it, but that it's starting to turn the table. Yeah. I I mean, again, you know, we've talked about it certainly at at various points through, through COVID just, you know, um, the revenue um, uh, impact, you know, that that COVID had on us. And and, uh, again, just so grateful and thankful we've been able to, to, to mitigate it, um, we were able to do that. Um, I'm proud to say this: we did not decrease one student athlete service um, throughout COVID. And so, when you think about preparing champions for life and our and our four pillars, um, we were able to to maintain um, and and maybe even in a in a couple 
areas even increase a little bit. So we're able to, to again, um, maintain all of those student athlete services. Um, you know, we've talked about it. We're, we're able to, you know, maintain our, our staffing level. Uh, we didn't, we didn't have to lay off everyone. Uh, people are, are excited about football, you know, 96% renewal rate, which is, um, I think it's the best renewal rate that, that we've we've had since I've been been here as as athletic director. You know, approaching 1,100 um, you know uh, new season tickets. Um, we're you know overall we we've, we've surpassed you know the the pre COVID numbers. So um, yeah, it it feels like spring. It feels like things are. Are, are starting to blossom and uh and we're getting back to to uh to some normalcy you know we're still cautious um we're going to continue to be cautious and be be careful and thoughtful but um we're we're tracking in a good direction mac did you think that was going to be possible like deep down when everything was was kind of you know, in such disarray, did did you think that you guys were going to be able to make it through the, the way that you have without having to really eliminate too much at all? And, and you know, not even in terms of just staff, but the, you know, amenities and things like that. I mean, was that realistic in your mind maybe a few months ago? Yeah, Curry, that's such a, that's a, such a fair question. And, um, you know, I think we believed, I, I mean, I think I believed, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say yes, 100%, you know, no right. doubt. Um, but yeah, we were, we were confident, you know, um, we had a plan, you know, as, as you all know, um, I'm a huge believer in, in preparation and dotting our I's and crossing our T's and, um, you know, from the, from the onset of COVID back in, back in April of 2020, our cost reduction plan, um, you know, we've talked about our, our two primary goals were, you know, protecting our people, meaning both our student athletes and our, and our staff. And then two, making sure that when we, when we come out of COVID, that we're really well positioned, that we, we don't make any decisions that, um, we're gonna, we're gonna create, you know, permanent damage or, or long term damage where it was gonna take three to, to five years to, to dig out of and and um and i think we've done that i think we're we're in a we're in a position and it's um it's just a it's a, a great job by by uh by you know our cody hall and and um uh, and our financial services staff and and all of our coaches and and uh and people just sacrificing and and uh finding a way to to get it done and you know this is this is a tangent and so I apologize, but, um, you know, I, I remember clearly, you know, before the, before the fall semester meeting with, with our leadership team, which is our, our head coaches and sport program administrators. And, and I talked about the, the win, the, the W is, is going to be to, to compete, to actually play seasons and do it, do it in a safe manner. And, uh, and, to, to now look back and think about all of the teams that we've had ranked in the in the top 10 for our men's team basketball to win a, a national championship um you know tennis right now get getting ready to compete in the lead eight and softball on its way to florida on and on and on right our men's golf team in in the re regional and um you know baseball will 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 go to postseason um what a what an unbelievable accomplishment by our by our student athletes and and our coaches and all of the support staff. Um, it's been a it's been a really hard year, but it's it's been a, a really special year as well. How much stuff because of the fact that you are you know look so far out and you you, you talk about it being prepared and having these meetings? How much stuff that hasn't come up yet or that you know is maybe on the horizon in a couple of years has your staff talked about and you guys maybe have at least plan a for because you had all this time you know to to kind of extrapolate things during during the pandemic yeah i, I mean paul a, a good amount of it i mean you know again um you know covid it, it felt like you were you were managing and 
and um, and, and I think managing is a better word than leading. Um, but I think you know, during COVID, so much of it is you were managing crises every every day, and um, and so while you were doing that, you were also um, simultaneously, at least we were trying to be forward thinking and to anticipate and to make sure that that we set up set ourselves up for for future success and you know not just not just this upcoming 21 22 you know year but but 22 and 23 and um, how does everything we do right now and, and again we talk about everything counts everything matters how every detail how we take care of everything right now will have impact 12 months from now 24 months from now 36 months from now and uh, and and we've been intentional uh, about it. I'm not not saying we've been been perfect, but um, those are those are certainly conversations that that we have and continue to have. Mac, uh, the university announced last week. You know the the donation, the gift, uh, the basketball court, uh, the give light campaign has reached uh, the billion dollar mark out of the 1.1 billion initial target. Uh, just your thoughts on on the fundraising side of things, how that's impacting sports moving forward, and um, you know, just obviously a, a pretty big achievement for the university to 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 get that going, especially during these times. Yeah, no, it's it's been a wow, a great job by by the by the university. You know, our vice president for advancement, Dave, Dave Roselli, is a good friend, and him and his staff. You know, Greg Davis and Toby and, you know, on our staff, Nick, just so many people that, that have done an outstanding job. And, you know, I, I know when we launched, you know, the, the, the campaign, um, just coming out of all of the, all the things that, that had happened with the, with the football program, there were, there were certainly several that said this is the wrong time and, and, and not a good time to do that. And, and now fast forward four years and, you know, we've broken the, the, the billion dollar mark and, you know, it won't be long before we, we break the $1.1 million mark and, you know, athletics, um, you know, we, we had a, we had a goal and we've been able to, we had an external goal that uh, we've been able to surpass. And, and then I set an internal goal um, telling our staff that the, the external goal wasn't good enough. We needed to do it even better. And we're, we're close to that. And, you know, that translates into, you know, the, the opportunity to enhance, um, you know, not just facilities, but, but, you know, um, the way we, way we continue to support our student athletes, um, and all of the, all of the services. And we're going to, we're going to continue to grow those and make those better. And, and then, you know, you, you certainly think about the pavilion and the, and the football ops uh, building. And, and those are two, two realities now that, that are, that are going to happen um, because of, you know, generous donors and, you know, Paula and, and, and the late Mark Hurd are, are two very, very special people and the way they've stepped up with the welcome center and, and then the court and, you know, I don't know that we had an opportunity to, to, to talk through that, but, you know, we were very specific on um, actually not the court, but the, the floor naming right and uh, gives us an opportunity to, to add a name or two in the, in the future if we want to name or add an initial additional name or two for the, for the court naming. Um, that was very much part of the conversation with Paula and, and – uh, she she would have had it in, you know no other way and so um, just a lot of good things going on and, and we're gonna we're gonna continue to to, to raise money and um, you know there's there's that old old saying it was one of the, the first things I learned about about uh, about fundraising is you don't G G E T unless you A S K so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna keep uh, A S K. So. I, I had a I had a client one time tell me that this has been years ago. They were upset because I had not contacted them about some coverage I was going to have at Rangers baseball training camp, and they called me while I was at the camp, and they said, "Hey, I didn't know you were going to be there." And I said, "Yeah, well, how come you didn't ask me to be a sponsor?" And I said, "Well, you you're so involved in so much else." And they said, "That's my job to say yes or no." It's yeah. exactly what you just said. 
Yeah. I, I hey, I um, I'm a big believer. As crazy as this sounds, is no. The answer no is is one step closer to to, to yes. So well, my dad used to tell me that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> he did <laughs> all the time. He was in, he was a fantastic salesman uh, himself. That was his career. But uh, Mac, uh, how open would Baylor be? And some people are, and some people aren't. Depends on the university to corporate naming rights of a stadium. Yeah, I, I think there's, um, you know, I think absolutely uh, we would we would be be open to it. The the right, you know, the right. Uh, the right partner, you know, when, when I was at, uh, the university of Houston, the new, the new stadium there, TDCU, uh, in 2014 was, uh, very much involved with, with that naming right. And, uh, that made great sense for Houston, uh, TDCU, the, the leadership, the, the organization, the culture, wonderful, wonderful people. And, uh, was a, was a great unity partnership with, with the university of Houston and, um, you know, we would we would be open to the to, to something similar um, like that here at, at uh, Baylor if if the opportunity presented itself. So, Mac, uh, just to, to clarify, I mean, obviously the arena's moving full force. You, you got the the court and uh, the naming rights and, and the opportunities as you mentioned for that to to even grow. So that football ops building is that now like. Is that finalized as far as you know moving forward, green lighting the project? Like, kind of where are you on that officially? Craig, that that is a good question, and I didn't think you'd let let me leave this call without <laughs> digging a little deeper on on that one. So, um, you know, candidly, transparently, I'm not ready to say it's 100 percent a go, but we're we're tracking it's it's in a really good spot right now, and uh, I certainly. Um, I certainly believe we will we will break ground here, um, you know, some sometime around when we when we break ground um, on the pavilion. Matt, a couple of other things um, on the court, and obviously that's just an image right now. What was the feedback on it? What was the feedback? Also, obviously, you guys are moving forward eventually and digging dirt on the uh, west side of 35, where the arena is going to be, or field house, or complex is going to be. What has been the uh, the the overall feedback you've received from anything Baylor? Yeah, I, I think you know, on, on certainly the the Mark and Paula Hurd floor naming right for for the pavilion that that has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, and people excited and, and fired up and, and happy. And, and, uh, so that's, that's been really, really positive. And, and again, we, we have not made the decision on, on location for, uh, for the pavilion, but certainly, you know, in the process of, of doing that. And, uh, and I, I think we'll have clarity soon. And, um, you know, I, I would say just in, in general conversation, you know, because people know it's out there, right? Sure. And, and so I, I think feedback uh, mainly is it's positive. Um, I, I don't think it's you know one hundred percent. There's certainly some that that have have a, a different opinion, but um, you know I think it's been mainly positive and and um, and, uh, and and good feedback. One thing, uh, obviously, Nikki. Colin, your women's basketball coach, I believe, may be back in town. She's added a couple of staff members, but there's more to go. There is an attrition right now with the roster. You knew that might happen. She knew that might happen. Conversations with her about uh, obviously trying to play catch up with that as they've lost some more to the transfer portal. Yeah, no, I, I think we're in a good place, uh, Smoke. I, you know, I, I really do. I appreciate the question, and, and we knew that there would be some movement. Um, there always is anytime you, you have transition, you know, I think about queen and Alyssa and Caitlin and, and Sarah and, and Jaden and, and, you know, Jordan Lewis and Tamaria. And, you know, I hope I'm not missing any, anyone else, but, um, you know, those are all, uh, current roster, um, student athletes that, that, uh, have made a, made a commitment to, to stay. I think, um, you know, a couple for, for, uh, different reasons, personal to them. Um, I don't think it was really anything, anything to do with Nikki felt like, um, from a playing time perspective that, uh, they wanted uh, to test the water. You know, you, you look at somebody like, like moon, you know, um, I think, 
you know, Moon is, she's such a man. She's, she's one of my all time favorite student athletes, but you know, she's going through the process of where's the best place for her. if She wants to pursue, you know, her, her nursing degree and, and start on that uh, immediately. And so, you know, by, by going into the, the portal that, that allows her the opportunity to, to maybe explore a couple different options. We'll see where that lands. Obviously she's from Louisiana, but, um, we support, we support her one, 100%. And, um, so again, I, I think we're, I think we're in a, in a good place and, um, none of it unexpected. And, you know, um, I talked to, to Nikki daily and, and, um, I think she's at peace with it and, you know, she's, she's working on the rest of the staff. You know, I'm personally so fired up that, uh, Sophia is, uh, is joining our staff. I had an opportunity to, to talk to her for about 20 minutes. Oh, probably four or five days before her and Nikki were, were able to get on the phone and, and, and have a conversation and what a, what an unbelievable uh, person. And uh, she's going to be terrific. And Tari, um, Tari was at Houston when I was there for, for a couple years and uh, literally um, hated to see her leave, leave Houston for, for Arkansas. She's special. So um, slowly, but surely, um, you know, Nikki's going to build the staff and, and they're going to be, they're going to be great, great character, great quality. Thank you, Mac. Appreciate it uh, very much. So he's he, uh, he admitted to us, right? This is no, he did not about the football ops building. But thank you very much, uh, Mac. Appreciate your time every Tuesday. Mac Rhodes, director of athletics, with us at Baylor, and we tried to run through the gamut of many things, including the transition in the women's basketball roster, which we gave you some of that news earlier. But the one that Craig you picked out of everything he said and came back to that is the one about the football ops building. Yeah, and uh, I don't think about myself very often, um, but uh, I did find it kind of funny that Mac was figured that I was going to be the one to circle back to that just because I guess we know each other well enough now. So, yeah, I, I definitely did. When I heard that, my ears perked up, and I just tweeted it out. But, yeah, uh, the football field house is uh, not, you know, officially a go in terms of a uh, date and breaking ground and all that, but it's a go as far as the – it appears the money side of it or as much as – you know, it can be at this moment, and yeah, he says they're going to break ground, uh, hopefully around the same time they break ground in the pavilion, so more construction in Waco, Texas. No, just kidding. You won't um, even know, listen, people yeah, won't even notice. At some no, point... It'll blend in with all the other junk going on around here, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's obviously massive news because the pavilion's one thing, uh, and I know there's been a lot of discussion about that, but... They do need a football building. Uh, they need their own dedicated football building. They need it for recruiting. They need it for just the stuff that they do. They need it for space. They need it for a lot of different reasons. And the other sports need that space, too. That's In the taken Simpson up. Hires building. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's he's, he's talked about it in depth before about how that would matter. And, um, and I think that's fantastic news. A football field house would be program changing in a good way. Well, the, if you think about it, you see so you have the pavilion. He did say that they have not yet made a decision, although it appeared as if it does appear it's going to be on the opposite side of 35, on, on the west side of 35, which of course has been a you know, back and forth on that. Wherever the hell they build it, just it's going to be beautiful. And, um, and, and then uh, I was going to ask him this. I believe they probably wanted to reach uh, and mention the, the flooring name uh, Paula and Mark heard maybe even a couple of months ago, but the basketball transition uh, probably delayed that a little bit. So they come back with that. I thought that was interesting timing with that. But the football ops building, I, uh, listen, when I arrived in Waco in 2010, there was not much construction at all. Now, everywhere you look, there's construction and it's positive. I know some people it's bad. It's hard. We had a construction right in front of us. It kind of delays how we get here. But, man, is this place growing leaps and bounds. And it's a pain in the – you know what? It is. But it is just people are turning dirt left and right. Should I uh, sh delete my tweet and change the football ops building? I said field house. Uh, nah, I think it's fine. Okay. I think people know. I, I'm, I'm gonna re I'll, I'll respond to your tweet and put football yeah. ops building on that as well. All right. Uh, when we come back, Craig Smoke and off the radar, there's been an update on a baseball off the radar note, I think, that will be a part of today. And this is Sikkim 360.